reported a good set of Q3 earnings with better volumes and realizations leading its India performance. My colleague Nigel D'Souza caught up with the MD and CEO TV Narendran and began by asking him about the EBITDA and the way forward. Listen in. I think about 1,500 rupees in that has come from uh, inv inventory movements. Uh, so I wouldn't call it a one-off because it, quarter on quarter, if you build up inventory or inventory gets drawn down, you will see that movement. So every quarter you may see a little bit of up or down. So about 1,500 bucks is uh, because of that. The rest is uh, because of operational improvements. Got it. All right. Now for quarter four, in comparison to quarter three, what is the steel price movement for the India operations? If you could give us a rough number out there. And what about coking coal cost? How did they move in the past quarter? And what could the average be for the coming quarter? So uh, if you look at uh, steel prices, uh, last quarter on an average, I think we were about 1100 rupees higher, Q3 over Q2. And this quarter, Q4 over Q3, we expect it to be about 1000 rupees lower. I'm looking at quarter average to quarter average. If you look at coking coal costs, uh, I think last quarter it went up uh, uh, by about ten dollars uh, from Q2, and uh, Q4 is expected to consumption. I'm talking of consumption cost is expected to go up by another ten dollars in Q4 compared to Q, uh, Q3. So safe to say that in quarter four, the EBITDA per ton of the India operations could be more than two thousand rupees lower in comparison to what you have delivered. You know, I'm clocking in this fifteen hundred rupees. And there is a cost element as well. So maybe 2,000 to 2,500 rupees lower in comparison to what you've seen in quarter three? Not necessarily, because we are also expecting uh, India sales to be about 0.4 million tons higher in Q4 compared to Q3. So you'll have larger volumes in Q4 compared to Q3. And that will help us both in terms of uh, rupees per ton as well as rupees cross. So at current reckoning, if you give and take everything, how much lower do you think? It will be 1,500? I think it will be pretty much around the same. I don't think it will be much lower because there are, see, while we look at coal and uh, uh, NRs, but there are many other costs in the ecosystem, uh, uh, what we buy and our conversion costs and things like that. So largely, I expect the EBITDA margins to be around this level next quarter also. X of that inventory gain, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. All right. So, you know, if I work with that, it should be roughly around 15,500 rupees, 15,400 rupees or thereabouts. Let's move ahead. Let's talk about the European part of the business. Now, the Netherlands, uh, the realigning of the blast furnace has taken place. So, could you tell us uh, by when do you expect the Netherlands operations to return back to the green profitability? And if yes, could you give us a rough range out there? Sure. So I think, uh, as you said, the uh, last one is relining uh, took a bit longer than we had thought, and uh, that impacted us in Q3, and has also impacted, will impact us a little bit in Q4 because we've lost January, but the blast one is, uh, should be up and running next week. So you will see uh, hot metal production in February and March. Uh, so you will certainly see uh, much less losses in Q4 compared to Q3. And we hope to return to the positive uh, numbers by uh, Q1 of next year. One thing to be kept in mind is uh, steel prices in Europe are also creeping up because of the tensions in the Red Sea and uh, Suez Canal because a lot of imports uh, comes through the Suez Canal into Europe. So we're seeing that play out a little bit as well. So we're watching that space. Uh, but certainly operationally, we expect uh, Q4 to be better because the blast furnace comes back. And from Q1 next year, at least operationally, we should be back to where we were before. Take us through the transition of the UK business. You know, if you could give us uh, rough details out there. How do the economics work out and when does that blast furnace shut down? So, as you are aware, uh, we've announced uh, the next stage uh, in this journey. Uh, over the next two months, we will be in deep discussions with the unions. Uh, uh, what is the formal consultation process? Uh, what we've said is uh, we expect one blast furnace to be closed down in the April-June quarter and the other blast furnace towards the end of the calendar year. So that is the timeline for the restructuring. Obviously, uh, all this moves on after the discussions with the union, but this is broadly the timeline. And you will start seeing the benefits of that only as we do this, uh, as we close both the blast furnaces, because uh, there are a lot of costs to be taken out as well. Okay, all right. Uh, the net debt numbers holding steady. Uh, you know, for FY25, uh, you know, what kind of a number could we look at in terms of net debt? You have CAPEX plans as well, and it's quite good that you've maintained this net debt number despite having these big CAPEX plans, but what's the outlook? Yeah. 
So uh, obviously we want to uh, take it lower. We'll see how much more we can release as far as working capital is concerned. Uh, the net debt has also been impacted because of the losses in Europe, which should get less as uh, Netherlands comes back. So our long-term commitment of continuing to reduce net debt stays, and we certainly want to bring it down below 77. I don't want to give you a number just yet, but uh, certainly we have to bring it down this quarter and we'll continue to bring it down next year. Because next year you will also start seeing the benefits of the Kalinganagar expansion coming through because so far we've been spending the capex without getting the benefits. All right. By when does Kalinga Nagar 5 million ton plant get commissioned? Which quarter, sir? So uh, multiple parts of the plant have already started getting commissioned. We commissioned the pellet plant, one line earlier in the year. The second line was commissioned last month. The cold rolling mill has got started. Uh, the uh, slab caster, the new slab caster got started two days back. The blast furnace, uh, the construction and everything else should get completed in Q1 of uh, uh, the next financial year, and we will start it uh, immediately thereafter. So I, I think uh, you will start seeing additional volumes uh, coming through next year. What will be that additional volume? We'll give that guidance, uh, you know, when we do the annual results. Hey, given that you're going to be getting some additional volumes, so at current reckoning, what could the volume growth be from India operations in uh, FI25 versus FI24? FI25, I'll give you a specific number later because we'll be closer to uh, the blast furnace commissioning when we do the call next. But over the next two years, you'll see uh, 5 million tons, uh, you know, coming out of the, because that's the capacity that we are adding. So at least, uh, you know, uh, in the next two years, you will see that incremental volume. What is the expectations from budget 2024? I think the focus on infrastructure should continue uh, because not only does that help uh, steel demand, it also helps us in the cost of doing business because uh, logistics costs is a significant part of our costs uh, outside the factory gate. Uh, I think uh, we should continue to work on the ease of doing business, both at the central level mm. and at the local levels. Uh, and of course, the focus on manufacturing and, uh, you know, uh, support for that is uh, certainly welcome. All right. Final question before we let you go. In the, in the past, you've told us, Nigel, we want to look at more organic growth. Inorganic growth is not something we're looking at. Vedanta's asset is on the block. Are you all interested out there? And N NMDC Steel as well could potentially be on the block. Uh, any interest I'll on be... either of those two? <laughs> So I'll just say that uh, what I said earlier, we'll focus on organic growth. Okay, all right, that's the word coming in from Tata Steel and IGEL also has just reported numbers. I'll take some time to go through those, but just quickly take a look at HPCL, BPCL and IOCL. HPCL just reported numbers. The stock is at the day's low, uh, did not look like a good set. Uh, so that is something that the street does not like. And if we compare it with IOC, which reported numbers yesterday, they were really strong. Um, and uh, that stock was higher because of those strong numbers. So this divergence that we are seeing between the two OMCs in terms of numbers is something that the street doesn't seem to like. If you look at BPCL reports, numbers on Monday. So ahead of those numbers and the disappointment that has come by in this particular uh, stock, that stock has also uh, touched the lows of the day. Um, so we'll get into a break. When we come back, we'll talk about a lot more stocks. DB Corp is in focus on the back of numbers and we'll discuss IGEL's numbers as well. So stay tuned for that.